fish on. Woo! I got one. He smashed that shad tube. That is awesome. Nice fish. Feels really heavy. We'll see. We're in pretty heavy wind here. He's staying down. He's fighting hard. He's trying to jump. Still 125 feet behind the boat. And they want to jump. Just keep that low rod angle and try to keep them under the water. That that cushion of that water will help you know not throw the hook if possible. Okay, try to keep him down. Keep him from jumping. Killed the motor. We were having a hard time in that wind. Here we go. Oh. Let me show you this fish. Ugh. Man, I fought that fish for a long time in that wind. It was difficult. It's all tangled up. Look at that beautiful trout. Man, that is awesome. It is not an easy bite out here this morning. That is a really nice, nice and clean Shasta Lake rainbow. We've had some problems with copepods. This one has a little mark there. But uh, like I said, it hasn't been easy this morning. We've been marking a ton of fish. We've got a couple bass, we've got a couple trout, and um, we got one trout with copepods that I didn't want to film. We've got this beauty here. But we've been working the marks, and uh, we pop him off the hook here. He really wanted that shad tube. I'm running one of my rainbow colored shad tubes behind the uh, watermelon diamondback. We were going about 1.4 when that fish hit. And he got that hook way back in his mouth. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. I just got back from three fantastic days on Lake Shasta. Um, caught a lot of trout. The bite was not easy. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about what I encountered up there. Not just for guys that are going to fish Shasta, but guys that are going to fish for trout in big reservoirs, you know, kind of across the board. So, you know, one of, one of my, my cornerstone ideas is that you find the bait, you find the trout, and you can catch the trout. But finding bait, once you've found it, it does offer up a couple of very unique challenges. One, when you see the bait on the graph, you don't know how big the bait is. And I'm talking about the individual minnows. Now, I had a little bit of an advantage at Shasta this weekend because I knew they were feeding on shad and they were feeding on small shad, shad about that big. Another factor that, that, that you have to overcome when you're dealing with schools of bait is if there's too much bait, the trout are going to be really full and they're going to be, you know, lethargic, semi-reluctant to strike. There's going to be a couple feeding windows throughout the day and the rest of the day, it's going to be downright tough simply because the fish are full of food. They have all the food they want right around them and uh, they're just not that inclined to feed. Now, there's a couple ways to overcome that. If the trout are up near the surface, you can often shock them into biting with a fast moving lure, a fast moving spoon, something like that, okay? So up at Shasta, you know, this is a, uh, this is one of the eighth ounce humdingers. This is a perfect match for the size of the shad that the fish are feeding on right now. But the problem with this is, and I did catch some fish on this lure. The problem with this is, is this is a lure that needs to be trolled at two and a half miles an hour or more to be really effective. And at Shasta, most of the fish I caught were 80 to 110 feet deep. I caught a couple at 60, but mostly in that 80 to 90 foot range, all the way down to 110, that's where I was getting the fish. It's very difficult to troll with trout gear at those depths at the kinds of speeds you need to hit to be effective with a humdinger. When you're going two and a half miles an hour, you've got an eight pound ball on your downrigger and you've got a hundred feet of line down, you're getting a lot of scope back, you're getting a lot of blowback on your, on your uh, fishing rods line. It's just not optimum. So shocking the fish with a fast moving spoon which which this would be my choice if the fish were up near the surface anywhere in the top you know 40 feet of the water column i would run with the eighth ounce humdinger and i would smoke them because that's just a killer shad imitation but when the fish were deep it just wasn't working so deep fish that have plenty of food the answer to that equation was slowing down a little bit so my next choice of lures was breaking out 
one of my shad spoons right there. Now, this is a spoon that I control, control significantly slower than a humdinger, but it's also a lot larger. And that was a problem. I caught fish on the shad spoon to be sure, but it was too large. I would catch a fish, I would see the little shad in their stomach, and they were small. So I was forced to slow down even more and try to match the hatch, and I ended up dropping my rod. No, I ended up doing very well on my shad tubes and on flies. Um, flies caught the biggest fish, but shad tubes, they did the best in terms of numbers. Now, and I used two. I used my, uh, my California shad pattern, which is basically dark over light, a little pink on the belly there. That was the most effective. The rainbow trout color also caught fish. It did almost as well, but the, the exact match did well. And I don't know what the light penetration is on Shasta at 80 feet, but they could definitely tell the difference between, you know, uh, like a green color and these, these, you know, more true bait fish colors. And since I was trolling at about a mile and a half an hour, one four, one five, all the way up to like one eight, I was teaming the, uh, the shad tubes with my Diamondback Dodgers. The Chrome Dodger outperformed the Watermelon Dodger, but the Watermelon color was working too. In fact, I think the only fish I captured on video on one of these rigs had hit behind the Watermelon, um, the Watermelon Dodger right out in front of Bridge Bay, between the Bridge Bay and Packers Bay, right out over the main channel. That fish was 80 some feet deep, 85 feet deep if I remember right. I think I was trolling at 1.4 four and I was running the watermelon blade with the rainbow pattern uh, shad tube and that tube is just the right size for the bait and shasta the shad are about that big they're about that long about an inch and a quarter something like that so it's a very close match so and of course I was slathering a lot of uh, shad scent procure on my tubes but that was working it allowed me to match the size of the bait. It allowed me to slow down to a manageable speed for trolling those kind of depths. And that was, you know, my hands down number one offering. I don't know why the flies were popping bigger fish on average than the shad tubes were because this is a more exact match. But uh, I caught, what did I get? I got three large fish on a pink and white fly. And I kind of attribute that to just reaction strikes. But anyway, here's my basic philosophy though. If you're fishing bait, you gotta match the size of the bait with your lures, okay? Given an opportunity, given the, the chance, you wanna troll fast, you wanna troll fast with spoons or minnow plugs. If you have to slow down, stick with spoons and slow down. If you're still not getting it done with the hardware, break out the soft plastics. Some guys are gonna break out the gulp minnows. Some guys are gonna break out the hoochies. I'm gonna break out my shad tubes and uh, that's likely gonna work. Put a lot of scent on them, get that speed down. The fish are gonna see the shape, the silhouette, the color, you know, all that. They're gonna taste it and it's gonna create strikes for you. If you still can't get hit at that point, um, you're kind of forced to break out the natural stuff. That's the time to start rolling bait fish, rolling shad, stuff like that. That's a great way to go. It's a complicated way to fish. Keeping the bait, rigging the bait, it's kind of a pain in the, uh, in the you know what. But uh, most of the time, you can get them on spoons. If you can't get them on spoons, slow down, break out the soft plastics, break out the small dodgers, and you can get them on those rigs. I also found that they did not want a lot of action. I was getting that shad tube a lot further from the dodger than I ordinarily would to get strikes. If I had it about two links behind the dodger or so, I just wasn't getting as many links as, or as many strikes as I was if I had it back there several dodger links where it was getting very little action. So experimentation pays. Find the fish on the sonar and then start working on them and figure out what you can do to maximize fishing success. Um, it was tough this weekend. 
caught fish every day. We caught fish every time we were on the water. It wasn't, you know, a floodgate, but we were catching fish. If you're interested in getting your hands on some of my shad tubes, go to the store. We got a strong supply right now. Um, we've got them in five different colors. The blades are available. The hooks come with the kit, the glow beads that are inside. Everything's there. And uh, I would strongly advise you to grab some shad tubes. I've been playing with them a ton this, this you know, summer and early fall, and uh, they have been flat out producing fish. We've caught some kings on them. We've caught a lot of rainbows on them, and I think they're just gonna keep on producing fish when the going gets tough for us. Anyway, this is Cal Kellogg. Just some of my thoughts on how to deal with trout holding in and around big schools of bait in deep water and in shallow water. And that, that's gonna apply at a lot of our big reservoirs, Shasta, Don Pedro, Folsom, New Maloney's, and the list goes on and on. So anyway, you guys have a great day. I am jumping off for right now, and I will catch you next time right here on the Fish Hunt Shoot YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I'll be back with a lot more fishing tips here in the very near future and uh, please go check out our store man i try to put up good tackle at a good 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 price point and uh, we got a lot of cool stuff up there we got some striper gear lots of trout stuff some rods stuff like that i'm working on getting some reels and stuff from okuma in the store and uh we will go from there but anyway i'll catch you next time this is cal kellogg and i'm signing off